Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Wednesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and the Mets kicked off their homestand last night with a victory over the San Diego Padres. Thanks to the performances of one Jason Vargas and Robinson Cano, who clearly is back on the juice. Of course, that's what everyone is saying, but uh, Cano with the three big home runs last night, Vargas with six innings of one hit shutout ball. Um, and that was really all the Mets needed to defeat the Padres, although the bullpen did their best to make it interesting toward the end of the game. I'll talk about last night's game and uh, today's game, or tonight's game rather, um, on today's show. So last night really was the Robinson Cano show, um, and it was the first time he showed what he is capable of doing when he's right, uh, at least the first time this year that he's done that uh, in a Mets uniform. Outside of spring training, of course, when Cano was just fantastic, um, he's, he's scuffled all season long, and over the last week or so, he's, had, uh, he's looked better at the plate, he's been taking better at bats. And last night, I don't know if it was a fluke or if it's the start of something, but um, he looked really good last night, uh, clearly with the three home runs. Um, but even Keith really pointed out, and you know, Keith is Keith is not really a homer. Um, I mean, he is. He's clearly a Mets fan, but he is also pretty fair with his uh, assessment and his evaluations. And he's never given up on Cano. He's never... Uh, at least as far as the swing goes. You know, he's never really said anything other than the, the bat speed's still there, the swing is still there. He's just hitting into some bad luck. And um, I, I've been skeptical and kind of hopeful that that certainly was the case. Um, and, you know, Mike Frances has been saying the same thing too. He's been saying, don't give up on Cano. He's, he's going to turn things around. He's too good of a hitter. Uh, Mike Silva said the same thing. Um... And look, last night, maybe, like I said, maybe it's the start of something new for Robbie Cano in a Mets uniform. I, for one, would be elated if that were the case. I think many of you would as well. So, uh, Cano was the story on the offensive side of the ball. Um, on the other side, though, it was certainly Jason Vargas um, doing what Jason Vargas seems to do now. I mentioned to my friends last night that I really felt like I really feel like Vargas is getting into a bit of a Bartolo Colon type groove here where he doesn't, there's nothing that he throws, nothing that he's doing that's overpowering, but he's still somehow um, able to keep hitters off balance, full hitters, and uh, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's really, it's really awesome to see a guy who doesn't throw hard, who locates his pitches, and who has success. So after Vargas departed after his six innings of, uh, as I said, shutout ball, one hit, one hit allowed, um, the bullpen came in, and uh, Tyler Bashler was eh. Then Gazelman bailed him out. Then Gazelman came back out for the next inning, and he was eh. And then uh, I forget who bailed Gazelman out. Did anyone bail Gazelman out? I don't remember. Um, but. Uh, it was Justin Wilson who ended up starting the uh, the ninth inning with a 5-1 to one lead for the Mets. And uh, he proceeds to walk the first two batters that he faces, bringing the, uh, bringing, uh, the uh, turning him into a safe situation, rather, I should say. So Edwin Diaz was summoned from the bullpen, and Diaz was good. Did what he had to do, got the job done, and the Mets took a 5-1, to one, uh, sorry, 5-2 to two victory um, because he did allow a sacrifice fly. That's not a run that counts against Diaz, though, of course. So, uh, again, he did his job, and that's nice to see. So perhaps the Cano and Diaz debacle trade, which everyone is writing off in the first, you know, 20% of its life, uh, maybe it's not going to end up turning into such a debacle after all. We don't know. Um, we'll, we'll never, we, we won't know until either Jared Kelnick or Justin Dunn uh, make their big league debuts, if that happens. You know, how can you judge how, how a trade until you see what the other side has gotten for it? Uh, right now, of course, it looks bad. We all know that. We all see that. But there, there are no guarantees with these prospects turning into anything other than just that, prospects. Um, so we'll see. 
I do find it interesting, however, that um, Kelnick and bo both Kelnick and his mom have been in the press a lot. Um, New York Post, of course, doing what the New York Post does, and um, but basically just being the tabloid magazine that it, it is. Um, I think their their quote yesterday or their their uh, headline yesterday was Kelnick's mom doesn't want to be covered anymore by the media. So I'm like, all right, well, stop covering her. She's not a story. You're making her a story, you know, and you're making this whole thing a story. And it, it's something that Mike Silva's been saying for the past month or so now, really being critical of the Mets beat reporters and the Mets reporters who just seem to pile on and want to pile on um, the Mets and just, you you know, take advantage of the fact that they're a laughing stock and whatever and call out the Wilpons all the time and um, be, be snarky on Twitter and do this sort of... of Bush League reporting where, you know, the, the mother of a former prospect, uh, former first round draft pick is, is, is column fodder for, for a story in the newspaper. Like, come on, dude, that, that's just Bush League, you know, report on the team, report on the fact that the Mets, uh, the, that, that the Mets payroll is what it is. Report on the fact that, um, and do some investigating as to why and where the insurance money for uh, Joanna Cespedes is being spent and how it's being, quote, reinvested in the team. Now, do something like that. Do that instead of this. Because this is easy. This is low-hanging fruit. This is clickbait. And it's bullshit. So, sorry. That was just a little something I had to get off my chest there um, about our friends at the Post. And it's not just limited to them, of course. It is across the board. Uh, all of the newspapers are doing it. All of the beat reporters do it. And Twitter is the, the catalyst for it. You know, Twitter makes it so easy for these these beat writers to develop relationships with their audience, myself included. I mean, I follow all of them. Um, I followed Decomo, who I think has been unfair with a lot of his tweets over the last few weeks. Um, he tweeted something last night that I made me really scratch my head. And I'm like, what are you, t what are you trying to do, dude? Um, it, it, I don't know. It's just... It just Twitter's, Twitter's a toxic place, and it's easy to get sucked into the toxicity of it. Um, it's, it's a lot harder to rise above it. Um, not, to, not to pat myself on the back, but I try to avoid any of that toxic crap on there and on here, honestly. I just try to be real and try to... Anyway, sorry, I just got a call there. I had to interrupt our recording. But I, as I was saying, I, I just... I, on, this, on this outlet here, I just try to talk like a human being would talk to another human being. And I think that's what Twitter needs to try to remember. It's these are all people, and let's stop being so damn critical of them. You know, let's let's realize that nobody's perfect, and uh, everybody's got warts, and there's no reason to be assholes about it. You know. So uh, the Mets continue their series with the Padres tonight, and uh, it'll be Noah Syndergaard on the mound for the Mets as they look for a series victory. Um, if they are able to win tonight, they will of course go for the sweep tomorrow. So that'll be exciting. It's a day game tomorrow, um, and I will be back tomorrow to cover tonight's game, uh, the results, and um, the, the chance of the sweep, which I think is going to happen. So uh, let's wait and see. Until then, I thank you for watching. I appreciate it, as I usually do. Uh, you can follow me on the toxic wasteland that is Twitter, at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.